Good morning. Um, today I'm going to show you how I make corn eggs. They're a microwave heating pad, kind of like. This is an old one. I guess you can look at it. It's pretty yucky and needs to be replaced. You put it in the microwave. You heat them for one to two minutes. And they're great for aches, pains, headaches. You can also put them in the freezer. But they're just great for a lot of things. Get that one out of the way. Materials you're going to need is, I, I use, uh, this is a fairly thick muslin. I use that for the backing, and I also use it for the actual corn bags. I'll give you more on that later. And of course, then you need material. Put that aside. And then you need batting. I bought this at Walmart. It's a wrap and zap, 100%, 100% natural cotton. Perfect for microwave projects like insulated potato bags, casserole warmers, and more. Okay, that out of the way. I've got a cutting ruler. I have a cutting pad that swivels works better for me. Um, cutting blade, pair of scissors, and I use this for marking, just a red color pencil. You'll start out by cutting your materials. For the actual bag that goes inside, I cut at about the 11 by 11 inches. And then what you do is you cut, so around, all the way around to, there, leaving an opening here to fill it. Then you need to clip your edges. So when you turn the outside bag, it will be a better crispy edge. This is one that's been sewn and turned and you turn it. There's your opening, which you would then, I'll have to get the corn out later and show you. Give me a, give me a half of corn. I use, can you see that? Mm -hmm. This is deer corn. I bought it at Walmart. 50, 50 pound bag was about I got eight dollars. You then pour it into there. It's better if you have a funnel, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just wanted to show you there. Okay. And here's the next one. All filled up with corn, and right where the opening was. How much corn? Oh, about half full. This one's a little more than half full. But about half full is best. I'll show you why here in a minute. And then you sew this edge right here where the opening was. And then for a sturdier, more stable, secure, I like to sew around the edge. This one's a little bit further out, but you can sew closer. I just like to catch the inside seams and sew all the way around it. Now, when you're sewing around that, you gotta be careful. And as you're sewing, you gotta make sure you keep that corn out of the way. Because you don't want your needle hitting that dry corn. Yeah, this like I said, I feel these a little bit too full. And yeah, as you're sewing around, you push your corn, you gotta stop off and move the corn. You can also use rice, but I'm leery of rice because I've heard sometimes they catch fire. Uh, my uncle had one made out of pinto beans. They smell. <laughs> he got a lot of ribbing about the pinto bean smell. But it just so around there. Like I said, it just gives it a more secure edging. And... There's that one. 
Okay, so when you're getting ready to put your outer bags together, you have your muslin, and then you want to layer it with batting. We're cutting them 12 by 12. You can trim them up afterwards if you need to. And then, oh, yeah, and you layer it with your muslin batting and your top layer. I like to do a little bit of quilting on it. And the reason I do this is because this gives you a little bit of protectiveness from the heat. Because sometimes you can get a hot spot and it can burn you. It get stays, that all stitched down. It stays hot longer. Yeah, they stay hot longer too for quite a while. Then you'll do the same thing with your sides. You will layer. I would do this one first, set it aside, and then I would do my edges. Do one like that. One like this. Now these here, I put the binding on it, but I think from now on I won't do binding. I'll just make them extra long. And roll them over. And roll them over on the edges. And that way, you will do that one. Yeah, on quilt the side. Quilt it. Oh, quilt. Yeah, you'll quilt it. So. And then you'll do the same thing to the other. I like these pillowcase type covers. covers so that they can get and then you'll do the second one and do your do a little stitching on it and okay, and then we would take these smooth it out it's already been stitched and you'll take this one here Put it on there. You won't be seeing these edges. Right. And then you overlap. Yeah. Overlap that. And then you would stitch around. Which I haven't all done around. yet. All the way around. So you'll still have these little pockets here. And this is the one where. Well, show them the other one because we cut that out. What, this? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to put this back in. Okay, this is the, uh, that's the, the way finished work. one. See how you can. Oh. And I've got some plastic snaps. I was thinking I might put a snap there. I haven't decided for sure yet on that one. But this one here is ready to sew all the way around the edges. I trimmed it up on the edges so it just flopped nicer and you'll want to trim trim your edges too because the corners so you can do the corners stitch all the way around trim your corners oh I don't know if you can see that right here is where I just a simple line stitching for the quilting can you see this mm -hmm. Trim around the edges. And I'm only going to turn this halfway around so you can see that. Maybe I'll just do the whole thing so you can see. stitched all the way around the edges and I did trim it up a little bit because you didn't need all that bulk there but make sure you clip your edges because when you do that you get a much nicer corner first my fingers don't want to 
go up three. Let's right, see, so you can put that in there, put your bag in, the finished corn bag. Move it around. You can make these fit a little tighter. And there you go. And that's the finished one there. Now this one here is the other style I was talking about. I just took one long piece. This one is 24, about 28, 30 inches. You measure on your thing, 12, 12. It's 12, 12, 24. It's and four is 28. 28. Plus I had two inches on the ends to fold over and stitch. I cut my batting. I've got batting in there. I folded my edges over, sewed them down. Take this over, fold this over. Where's my marks? Fold that over. Stitch your edges. And then when you edges are stitched, you will have your opening to put your corn bag in. I think this would be easier than doing all these little sections, but I'd already cut the little sections. Yeah. So there are I could two do different them. ways you can do it. Give them microwave instructions. Microwave instructions is one to two minutes. Except the first time. Except the first time, you'll probably do that two minutes, take it out, give it a good shake because it'll be kind of, the corn will be wet. It has some moisture in it. Let it cool down, put it back in. It'll probably take three or four times before you get it completely dry. But, and then once they're dry, they should be fine. You shouldn't have any more problems with the moisture. Um, if you overcook them, you'll have burnt popcorn smell. <laughs> uh, a disclaimer, do not put these in with babies. The heat could cause an adverse reaction and it could cause SIDS. But we do not put these in with infants at all. Do you have any questions or comments? Put them down below and I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello again. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Hello again. I had a few more things I wanted to discuss with you on these corn bags. I found that it was funny after I was done, I found that if I just sewed around from opening to opening, sewed around the edge first. And then I filled the bag and so the edges closed. Okay, you that mean was much easier. Double sew around there. Yeah, bag. yeah. After <laughs> after it was sewed together, turn right side out, clip your edges, then turn them inside out, right side, right side out. out. Go ahead and sew around your edges just to where the openings are from here to here. Leave that open. Fill it. No, half fill. Well, half fill it. You can put more in it then that way too, but because yeah. you're not worrying about the corn hitting your needle. Yeah. Except for right here. Then you sew this when you're done. So that's one thing funny. I've been making these bags for 15 years. <laughs> I just figured it out. <laughs> okay. Um, and From now on, I won't be making the three pages three-piece version unless I have to piece together material I will go with this long one and it's just so less good. sewing and I, I do like doing this uh, 
Okay, sizes. The 11 by 11 and 12 by 12 is just something I picked last night because it was easy to whip out and cut those. You can make these any size you want. You can make oblong long ones. Say if you made this one here and you filled it like this, put some little places in there to keep the corn from shifting. Shifting and you can make you a neck wrap. Or a back. Or a back wrap. Or you can even make them shape to for, for headaches. You can make them to shape your around your eyes. Yeah. The sky's the limit on the size and shapes that you use on these. Also the amount of corn you put in. And the amount of adjust. corn you put in too to adjust because it just depends on, you know, like if you've got a really bad headache, you don't want 10 pounds of pressure on your forehead. <laughs> if you have back issues, you don't want a big clump of corn against right. your back. You want mm -hmm. it to flatten out. Mm -hmm. And on these ones here, I did the 12 by 12, and as I was putting them together, I made them a little bit smaller to fit the corn bag better. And I am going to try the plastic snaps on here to keep to keep that from happening. <laughs> Just one or two, maybe, maybe two here. Here goes plastic snaps that they have they sell now by Dritz is pretty good. This is the uh, Angel one finished. Here's the uh, birdhouse one finished. Made them a little bit smaller. I don't know. And what do I use them mostly for? Oh yes. <laughs> when you go to bed at night and your feet are cold, you heat them up about five or ten minutes before you go to bed. No, don't heat them for five or ten minutes. No. Just heat them for a minute or two, but five or ten minutes before. Yeah, and just heat it for two or three minutes. About ten minutes before you go to bed, slide that in where your feet go. And it'll warm the bed up. It'll warm up the bed where your feet is. It'll warm up the whole bed, really. No. You don't get into the icy, mm. well, well yeah. a little bit. That's terrible. They're not icy cold sheets, but... You have a nice warm spot. You got a nice warm spot to put your feet and... That's all I have for notes. Is there anything else you have? No, that was what I was... I sure hope you enjoy my video and that you will give it a try. See I mean, you next time. <laughs>